Before we begin our story, get yourself comfortable and cosy while I tell you a little bit about tonight's wonderful sponsor, Snoozeband. Snoozeband doubles up as an eye mask with thin, padded Bluetooth headphones built in, so now you can press play on your favourite sleepy cat story and immerse yourself in the experience, free from distraction, as you drift off to sleep. They offer a few different products, but I personally use the Snoozeband Original, which is more of a soft, stretchy fabric. It's breathable, too, and can be worn all night. The battery lasts up to 12 hours and has a built-in timer, so you can choose to automatically switch it off after an hour or two. Snoozeband really is top of the range. It's worked wonders for me, and I wouldn't recommend it if I didn't think it would help. Now for the good part. For a limited time, Snoozeband are willing to offer my listeners 15% off their purchase using the code SLEEPYCAT15 at the checkout, and this is valid for all their range. Customers in the UK get free 48-hour delivery on all orders, and international customers get free delivery when they buy two or more products, plus your 15% discount. So to all my sleepy cats around the globe, this is a great chance to buddy up with a family member or a friend and treat yourself to these premium sleep headphones. Snoozeband also has a six-month warranty, and if after two weeks you're not completely satisfied with your headphones, then they offer a 15-day money-back guarantee. However, in my opinion, and judging by the reviews, I don't think you have anything to worry about. So, for an immersive sleepy cat experience and a wonderful night's rest, Go to snoozeband.co.uk and use the code SLEEPYCAT15 for 15% off. I will include the link in the description and the comments. And without further ado, let us begin our story tonight. And thank you to Snoozeband for sponsoring this episode. A warm welcome back to You're a Wizard, a magical sleep adventure inspired by the world of Harry Potter, where you are the main character. As you take a moment to get comfortable, remind yourself that this is your story. This is your world now and there are no limits to what you can add to this adventure, so be sure to bring along your own unique imagination. Anyone that you meet along the way throughout this saga can be whoever you want them to be. They might be people from your own life, a famous figure that you admire, or a character from the books. Before we begin, we will do a short breathing pattern called 445. This is designed to help you slow down and quiet your mind after a long and busy day, preparing you for a good night's sleep and allowing your imagination to unlock. So, when you are ready, just exhale any remaining breath that you have, and as you feel the urge to breathe in, then inhale for four. 
hold it here for four and release for five. Allow the body to become heavier and the mind to empty. So that's in for four. Hold for four. And out for five. Imagine that you are blowing away any remaining worries or thoughts. Again, that's in for four. Hold it for four. And breathe out for five. Just let all of it go. Continue to breathe in this way in your own time. And as you let go of the day, allow yourself to sink deeper and deeper into comfort. Return to a natural rhythm. Let your thoughts turn to those of magic, wonder, and adventure as we continue our Harry Potter sleep saga. You're a wizard, part three, the first day at Hogwarts. With your eyes closed, you wake up to the low crackle of a simmering fire, coupled with the sound of autumn birds chirping away happily. The rich smell of old wood and fresh laundry drifts in the air. The thick, heavy duvet rests over your body comforting and warm. As you blink open your eyes, you see a gaping window by your bed, welcoming in a soft morning breeze. Your sleepy gaze wanders around the room and you take in your new surroundings, unfamiliar but comfortable and homely. In the middle of your bedroom sits an iron furnace, and inside is a log fire bubbling away, radiating a wonderful heat that wraps around your body, coating you with warmth. The curtains, cushions, and your bedsheets are decorated in the colours of your wizarding house, and all of a sudden you realise where you are. You find yourself reminiscing on the magical memories from yesterday. You remember waking up in the magical tavern, and during breakfast you were reunited with the beautiful black and white sleepy cat who would come to see you off on your adventure. 
you met your new friend, the wonderful giant, and travelled to King's Cross using enchanted flu powder. Then, after running through a magical gateway onto platform nine and three quarters, you boarded the express train and made your way across an alluring landscape of rolling hills, pockets of thick trees, and many beautiful animals living together in perfect harmony. It was on this train ride that you saw your very first dragon, Norbert, the guardian of the school, and a very old friend of your gentle giant. When the train finally stopped, you were guided by the giant through a woodland grove, arriving at a collection of small wooden boats. Once everyone was firmly seated, the boats began to row by themselves, carrying you across the mystical lake, guarded by starlight, towards your new forever home, the castle. Once inside, you were taken into the great hall at last, and sorted by the hat into your favourite wizarding house, your best friend quickly following behind. You have dreamt of this moment for as long as you can remember, and today you begin your first lessons as a student of magic, ready for your own adventure. Speaking of your best friend, they are still fast asleep, and right now are nothing more than a bundle under their covers. You make a mental note to remind them just how loud they were snoring this morning. Dotted around the room, atop sturdy wooden shelves, are little plant pots filled with many colourful flowers and enchanted herbs with purple and red leaves. Some of the flowers are moving by themselves, rippling with the morning breeze. As you step out of bed and open up your drawers, you are surprised to see all of your belongings packed neatly inside. Everything is colour-coded, clothes are folded, books are arranged in alphabetical order on your shelf, and your cases are tucked perfectly away on top of your wardrobe. But if you didn't do this, then who did? Perhaps it is simply one more wonderful feature of this magical castle. Just then, you hear a rustle from your bedside table, and you turn to see your pet animal finally waking up, giving a wide yawn as their sleepy eyes struggle to stay open. You wander over to their cage, unlock the door, and hold your companion gently in your arms. You reach into your rucksack by your bed and pull out a box of their favourite treats, feeding them from your hand as you shuffle over to the window. In the quiet calm of the morning, you perch on the inside ledge, cradling your animal and gazing out across the eternal landscape in front of you. Surrounding the castle is a flurry of green grass, bordered by a thick, dark forest with leaves of blue, orange and purple. A single willow tree, as wide as a house and at least fifty feet tall, 
stands proudly in the middle of the grounds. To your left is an oval stadium encompassed by tall wooden towers, each with banners of the four wizarding houses waving gently in the wind. Past the stadium and beyond the castle grounds sits a quiet, cosy village made up of little grey stoned cottages with thatched roofs. A collection of stumpy chimneys give off a silver haze that mingles over the village. Your animal breathes slow and steady as they relax deeper into your arms, enjoying this quiet time with you. You feel your own breath slowing down as well, and a new relaxation is flowing through your body. Then, among the clouds above you, you catch sight of an enormous bird of ruby and gold. Your eyes follow this majestic animal as it dives down and glides over the huge lake. The bird's mighty talons skim the surface, creating a ripple on the water that glistens against the golden sunrise. In a smooth, effortless flight, this bird takes off once again and drifts over to a solitary hut made of mismatched brick and topped with a brown roof shaped like a witch's hat. Here resides your dear friend, the gentle giant, who is the gamekeeper of the castle and professor of magical creatures. This enchanted bird dances across the sunrise, darting through wisps of white cloud in the pastel blue sky, backed by the grey silhouette of the mountains far off in the distance. It is the perfect picture of a perfect morning. Filled now with a deep sense of peace and a new excitement for the day ahead, you wander back over to your wardrobe and start to change into your wizarding robes. Your wonderful companion sits upon your bed now, and you leave their cage open, allowing them to roam free today and hopefully make some new friends of their own. Your animal won't be joining you in your lessons today, but they will always be here to be your friend and guardian whenever you need them. You are companions for life. And now, fully robed and ready for the day, you reach into your pocket and remove your wand. Instantly, you feel its magic pulse through your arm, up into your body, and begin to radiate all around you. You realize how lucky you are to be here in this castle, a proud student of magic. You are ready. With a glance to your best friend, still fast asleep, you decide to let them rest a little longer after the busy day yesterday. You will catch up later over breakfast in the great hall. Placing your wand back into your pocket, you take up your bag and head down the stone corridor towards your common room.
It seems today you are the first one awake, as the common room is completely empty. The embers of last night's fire are giving off an orange glow that illuminates the space. The tall wooden clock to your right ticks on in a steady rhythm, and the enchanted atmosphere is ever present in this cosy, beautiful room. As your eyes flick to the sofa on your left, you notice a small magical creature fluffing the cushions and patting them down, humming a happy tune. For the moment, they are oblivious to your presence, but as you step towards them, the floorboards creak. Their head quickly turns, and you are met by the big, wondrous eyes of a little elf gazing up at you with a nervous curiosity. They stand with their hands together, fidgeting with their fingers, before giving you a low bow. With a gentle smile, you return the bow, and the elf gives a surprised stare. You greet them with your name, and ask this little creature theirs. Daphne, she tells you, Daphne the house elf. She has a small, thin body, and rather skinny arms and legs. Her kind face is made up of big, brown, hopeful eyes, a pointed nose, and large, floppy ears that give her an innocent and endearing expression. Daphne explains, with a slight stutter, that, hoping you wouldn't mind, she took the liberty of unpacking your things, cleaning your clothes, and organizing your wardrobe. She thought you might be nervous for your first day, and wanted to give you one less thing to worry about. Gazing at this little elf, you feel an instant connection with the lovely Daphne, and you thank her for all her help, holding out your hand. She hesitates for a moment, but then, giving a warm smile, takes your hand and asks politely if you would like to be her friend. With an irresistible chuckle, you accept her very generous offer, and she gives an excited hop around the room, beaming with delight. You take this moment to ask her why she was so surprised that you returned her bow. Daphne stops and shuffles over to you. You kneel down to meet her as she whispers that although the house elf is now a free creature, there was a time when they were not, and they were looked down on by wizards and witches and treated rather poorly. Many of the elves were brought here long ago to work, cook, and clean the castle. However, Daphne reassures you that the current headmaster has always looked after the elves and their families, keeping them safe, warm, and well-fed. So much so that even after the house elf liberation, all the workers here including herself, decided to stay and live in comfort, continuing to care for the castle and its students. She is happy here, she tells you, but it is still a shock sometimes to be treated as an equal, Daphne adds with a sheepish smile, even now. Well, so long as she is your friend, she will be met with nothing but love and kindness, you tell her. And with that, little Daphne leaps into your arms, holding on tight. You feel a warmth radiate from her tiny chest. 
She takes a step back and places your palms against hers, making a binding promise to be your guardian in this castle and to watch over you. Daphne glances at the ticking clock and gives a gasp, telling you she ought to be in the kitchen right now, preparing the breakfast feast. Your eyes widen in amazement as you realize that last night's incredible dinner was made in part by Daphne. Promising to find you again later, she snaps her fingers and, in a blink, disappears into thin air. Daphne truly is one of the most precious creatures you have ever known. You stand in silence and smile at the thought of this lovely new friend joining your ever-growing list of beautiful companions. In that moment, you hear footsteps from the corridor behind. You turn to see your best friend, fully robed now, giving you a sleepy smile, followed by a wide yawn. With a new excitement, you place a hand on their shoulder and lead them from the common room down the echoey stone corridors of the castle, telling them all about your new friend, Daphne the House Elf. With a hint of regret, having not woken up early enough to meet her, your best friend asks you to introduce them the first chance you get. You agree to do this, of course, and soon the conversation turns to the day ahead, what lessons you might have later, and the subjects you are most excited for. On the walls around you, the wizards and witches in the many oil paintings are beginning to wake up themselves. Some give a loud yawn, and you watch a series of sunrises appear in these paintings as the many moons fade out of sight. The doors into the great hall are already open, with pockets of students filtering inside. The smell of a hot breakfast drifts through the huge archway, and with a low rumble in your stomach, the two of you race inside. The atmosphere is far more subdued and informal than the sorting ceremony and grand feast last night. The hall is dotted with drowsy students, sharing mumbled conversation and enjoying the beautiful breakfast banquet that is spread over each table. The little fires on the gargoyles continue to crackle, giving an eternal warmth to this wondrous hall. Above you, the enchanted ceiling is no longer filled with stars and galaxies, it has been replaced with the golden red sun rising in the east, and the pastel blue sky is illuminated in a crimson and gold light. You make your way to the table underneath the huge banner of your house, and as you take a seat, one or two older students greet you with a smile. They tuck into their breakfasts and sip a hot morning tea or coffee as they scribble down notes for their latest assignment. You take in this endless feast in front of you, spread across the entire table, and you are reminded of the little elf. 
You take a moment to pause and whisper a thank you to Daphne. And then, with a fresh hunger, you fill your plate with all the food that you crave the most this morning. You remember these magical golden goblets from last night, and knowing what to expect, you speak the name of your desired drink. Instantly, the goblet fills from the bottom up, stopping perfectly below the rim. As you take your first sip, you feel a beautiful vibration across your lips. This vibration travels over your tongue and down into your body, resting in the pit of your stomach. You feel every single muscle in your body relax and soften now, as you find yourself in a tranquil state of peace and comfort. A murmur of conversation mingles around the table, and you dip in and out of it as you continue to enjoy your magical breakfast. One or two of the friendly ghosts are drifting around the room, and as they float over to your table, they bid you all a good morning, and you return the greeting. You gaze around this mighty hall once again, taking in all of your surroundings, still amazed that after all these years of waiting, of hoping, you have finally arrived at the castle of your dreams. You share a smile with your best friend, and you feel so lucky to have them with you today. As you look over to the professor's table, you lock eyes with your gentle giant, who gives you an eager thumbs up, coupled with a beaming smile. You feel your heart brighten at the sight of your wonderful friend, and just being in this giant's presence, you know that you are completely protected here, and well looked after. In the next moment, a huge parliament of owls flies in through the high windows of the hall. Each owl carries a letter or a small parcel, and each silently glides down to the many recipients dotted around the hall. To your surprise, a smooth feathered tawny owl fixes their amber eyes onto you and floats itself down to your table, landing directly in front of you. Clasped between its beak are two letters. Your gentle owl pats its feet in excitement, urging you to take your letters, and as you do, it turns itself around in a little circle, hooting happily. The first piece of parchment is rolled up tight, tied with red string. As you unravel it, you see your house emblem embossed at the very top. Here is a timetable for all of your lessons coming up this week. Your best friend leans in with their parchment in hand and you compare timetables. Today, you both begin with a lesson in flying, learning how to use a broomstick. Following this, you will start your journey into transfiguration, with care of magical creatures coming in the afternoon. Finally, after sunset, you will meet at the very top of the tallest tower 
to begin your adventure into astronomy and your deep study of the night sky. Just then, your friend notices that your second letter is addressed to both of you, and on the other side of the envelope, underneath the red wax seal, are the initials A.D. You peel open the envelope and unfold the thick parchment. The letter reads, I hope your first night at the castle was a comfortable one. You are invited to visit my office this morning before your first lesson. I would very much like to speak with the both of you. Signed, your headmaster. A flutter of nerves runs through you as you turn your head to the professor's table. Instantly you catch the old headmaster sitting atop his golden throne, that same youthful energy radiating from him. He gives you a quiet nod with the hint of a smile as he peeps over his half-moon spectacles, his piercing blue eyes revealing a deep kindness coupled with mischief. In the next moment, you feel a huge hand gently land on your shoulder, and turning, you see the gentle giant looking down over his frizzy black beard. He gives you a smile and offers to guide you to the headmaster's office, his beady brown eyes full of excitement. As you look back to the teacher's table, the golden throne is empty and the headmaster has disappeared. With a hesitant look to your friend, you both stand up and follow behind the giant's heavy stride. You sweep out of the great hall and wander up a series of hard concrete steps. As you journey through the corridors, you ask the giant why the headmaster wants to see you. He taps his enormous finger against his nose, giving you a cheeky smile, and tells you not to worry, not to worry at all. The giant adds that you should look forward to care of magical creatures this afternoon. He has a real treat in store. He says proudly, a real treat. All of a sudden, you find yourself in a quiet, hidden corner of the castle, facing an arched alcove. Inside is a huge stone statue in the shape of a powerful eagle, its wings stretched out towards you. The giant places a reassuring hand on your shoulder, guiding you inside the alcove. He takes a step back and with a smile speaks the words, Sherbet Lemon. There is a low rumble under your feet and in the next moment the stone eagle bows its head and starts to turn on the spot. Suddenly, you feel yourself being lifted and a stone staircase begins to spiral up around the eagle. As you slowly turn, rising up bit by bit, you watch the shadowy figure of your gentle giant begin to fade out of sight. Still, this magical castle never fails to surprise you. Then, the winding staircase stops, and you are met by a tall wooden door with golden handles in the middle. 
a nervous excitement bounces between you and your friend, and with a shared smile, you open the door together. There is a deep, powerful magic in this room. You feel it all around you. The atmosphere is quiet and subdued. A brazier of blue fire gives off a low crackle, illuminating one corner of the room in a rich sapphire, and a fine gold dust dances through the air and twinkles with delight. The wall on your left is made entirely of thick bookshelves, towering from floor to ceiling and packed full of dusty hardbacks. They appear to be in some kind of order, although it is impossible to decipher. Peppering the wall on your right is a collection of oil paintings, depicting all the previous headmasters and mistresses of the school. There are too many paintings to count, but the eldest, perched at the very top, is dated back over a thousand years. Some of the teachers are taking a morning nap and others are quietly watching over you, guarding this enchanted room. Hanging above you is a small chandelier of candles, perfectly still and unflickering, blanketing the office in a soft yellow light. Two white pillars stand proudly on each side of a wooden desk in front of you. Atop the desk is a purple and gold lantern that pulses in a steady rhythm. Behind the pillars are two sets of white stairs leading up to a raised platform. In the middle of this platform is the silhouette of an enormous globe rotating in mid-air perfectly on its axis. As your eyes flick down, you spot the very same bird of ruby and gold from this morning, perched to one side of the desk and looking right at you. As you move closer, you realize that this is no ordinary bird, but a phoenix. Your best friend squeezes your arm, admitting in a low whisper that they had no idea phoenixes were even real. And yet, here one sits, right before your eyes, as clear as day. You reach out to the phoenix, and this majestic animal gently sniffs your hand. They brush their head against your palm and ruffle their feathers in excitement. In the next moment, the phoenix steps gently onto your forearm, looking at you in complete trust as they tilt their head left to right. There is a soft beauty to this innocent creature, and the watery eyes of the phoenix radiate a powerful love and reveal the knowledge of many lives lived. They gaze at you like an old friend and already you feel a deep connection to this wonderful animal. From above you, a calm voice calls out the tears of a phoenix can heal even the deepest of wounds. As your head flicks up to the platform, you see the flowing white beard of the headmaster hanging over you as he leans on the railing, a twinkle in his eye. 
the wily old professor shuffles down the steps to your right, lifting his cloak just above his feet and muttering under his breath. It is mostly inaudible, but you catch something about a little bit of twirling toffee stuck in his teeth. Suddenly, standing for the first time in his presence, you feel a strong paternal love coming from him. You can see how much he adores this castle and all who dwell within. He might look like a gentle grandfather, but age is not to be mistaken for weakness, for in front of you now stands arguably the most powerful wizard who ever lived. The unrivaled magical prowess and wisdom of the headmaster is clear to see. Even the characters in these enchanted oil paintings appear to revel and bask in his grace. And yet, despite all this, he is humble, gentle, and uncommonly kind. The headmaster gives the phoenix a gentle pat on the head, and he tells you that they have been his friend for as long as he can remember. The phoenix can never truly die, he adds, scratching his old companion under the chin, for even after their long life comes to an end, the phoenix bursts into a magical flame, only to be reborn from the ashes. A new body of youth and vitality, but a mind and spirit as old as the earth. This is a true bird of the heavens. They are a guardian of this world, and now clearly a guardian of you, the professor adds with a wink. Good friends are hard to come by, he says, so be sure to keep them close. And with that, the old professor lifts the elegant phoenix from your arm and places it back upon its perch. Now to business. I understand that neither of you were able to find a suitable broomstick before your journey here, so I took the liberty of picking them out myself. I hope you don't mind, but I do have a good eye for these things. And with that, the headmaster flicks his wand effortlessly, and two long parcels lift from behind the desk. They drift towards you and land right into your arms. The wrapping paper falls away, revealing a rich mahogany broomstick with smooth bristles in a bulb shape, one for each of you. The elegance and beauty of this broomstick is unlike anything you have ever seen. The wood is finished with a soft varnish and is weightless in your hands. On each side are two silver footrests and inscribed at the very top are your initials coupled with your house crest. The kind old professor lets out a low chuckle as you both give a wide-eyed stare. He reminds you, with a raise of his eyebrows, that these are not toys and must be treated with respect. Together with your friend, you thank this wonderful professor over and over again, until with a soft smile he raises his hand. Consider it a welcome gift, and use it well, he adds with a mischievous wink. Now, best be off, or you might be late for your flying lesson, and I wouldn't want to see you in detention on your first day. And with that, you bid him a good morning, 
wave goodbye to your phoenix guardian and run back to the alcove, racing down the spiral steps, chuckling away with your best friend. As you reach the bottom, you run through the maze-like corridors, retracing your steps from your journey with the giant. Before you know it, you arrive at a small archway that opens out onto the castle grounds. You can hear the murmur of students gathering outside. You take a moment to compose yourself and casually walk down the steps out onto the vast green field, trying not to appear out of breath. Your group is gathered around a tall, thin witch with spiked grey hair and deep-set amber eyes. She clears her throat, <coughs> looking right at you, and the class falls into silence. For a moment, you have no idea what to expect. But then, her stern face softens to a knowing smile as she looks at your brand new broomsticks, shining in the morning sun. With a sudden, bouncing energy, she calls out that it is time to begin. Professor, or Madame, as she prefers to be called, instructs you all to create two long lines facing one another and place your broomstick on the floor underneath your dominant hand. This is it, the moment you have been waiting for, your very first taste of magic. Madame insists that the first rule of flying is confidence. If you do not believe that you can do it, then you never will. Now there is no need to worry, she adds. I will be here guiding you all on this journey. And if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. To begin, she continues, raise your hand above your broomstick and give a firm command with the word up. You call out the command, but your broomstick only twitches on the ground. Just then, you hesitate and peer down the long line of students. As the muffled commands continue to call out, you see every single broomstick still on the floor. Some haven't even flinched while others swing left to right, or hover an inch or two above the ground, refusing to go any further. Right now, it would be so easy to give up, or to let doubt overwhelm you. After all, you have only known about magic for a few days. You wonder if perhaps this is all too difficult, or if there has been some mistake and your letter was never meant for you. But then you stop that thought, and instead you remind yourself of all the times that you have pushed on through adversity and overcome many challenges. You know that there is a strong resilience in you, and you are capable of doing whatever you set your mind to. A new surge of confidence bubbles in your stomach now, and with clear conviction, you give the order up. Your broomstick flies up effortlessly, landing perfectly in your palm. Your eyes widen in amazement, and you grip it tight, a beaming smile across your face. 
you realize that the words we use and the things we tell ourselves can be so powerful, and you vow from here on in to believe in what you are capable of and to treat yourself with kindness and compassion. Madame notices your success and gives an encouraging smile, spurring on the rest of the group who are still struggling. You look to your best friend who is having a hard time of it. Their broomstick hops up and down, reluctant to go all the way. They turn to you in desperation asking if they are good enough to do this. You place a hand on their shoulder and tell them to take a breath, to relax and think of everything that they have achieved already in life. You remind them of the incredible person they have grown to be and encourage them to think of themselves as you think of them. They whisper a thank you and hover their hand over their broomstick. With a resounding up, their broom leaps off the floor and firmly lands in their palm. They turn to you, beaming with delight, and the two of you share a warm embrace, reminding each other that no matter what, you will always be there to help. Slowly but surely, the entire class has managed to raise their broomsticks, and Madame, hands on hips, wearing a proud smile, advises you all that you are ready for the next step. She calls out to sit atop your broom and gently push off the ground, allowing yourself to hover a few inches above the grass. In perfect timing, you and your best friend straddle your brooms and gently kick off the floor, floating together happily. There is a new freedom flowing through you, and you feel a deep sense of control over your body and your mind. You focus on the broom feeling how it moves under you. If it tilts to the left, you learn to counter that with a shift to the right, and vice versa. You push the handle forward to lower yourself, and pull back gently to gain flight. Madame calls out to the group that the next rule of flying is to build the bond of trust between wizard and broomstick. In the same way that the wand chooses the wizard, you have to work to earn your broomstick's respect and gain its trust. Those of you that feel confident enough, she adds, will now follow me into the air for a little bit of fun. You are confident, and you are ready to follow Madame on a new, magical adventure. With an excited smile to your best friend, you both pull back gently on your brooms, and, along with a handful of other students, begin to soar up towards Madame, stopping just in line with the parapets of the castle walls. Madame leads the way, gliding higher and swooping around the many towers of the magical castle. You feel as though you are entering a deep state of tranquility. All other thoughts, concerns or worries are melting away from you and fading out of sight. In this moment, nothing else matters.
Already, it feels as though you are moving as one with your broomstick. You can't quite believe how natural this feels and how quickly it all makes sense. But then again, something inside of you has always been ready for this day. Madame flies with such elegance and grace. It is wonderful to witness. She guides you now above the tallest tower of the castle, and you circle it with ease. She calls out that students are free to explore on their brooms, but to rendezvous back on the ground in five minutes. She will keep a watchful eye over you all, keeping you safe and protected. The group peels off in different directions, leaving you and your best friend hovering above the castle. As you float up here, away from everything, you feel your mind clearing, and time itself seems to slow down. You take in the endless castle grounds, the forest, the lake, and the mountains in the distance. It is absolutely breathtaking. And then, as if out of thin air, your phoenix guardian swoops up from below you. They turn to face you, beating their wings in a steady rhythm, encouraging you to take flight with them. Without another hesitation, you follow behind the phoenix on a sweeping journey down the side of the castle. They rear their head and peel off to the right now, heading towards the enchanted forbidden forest. You glide over the top of the purple and orange leaves that ripple in the morning breeze as you follow the path of the phoenix. From here, you feel a pulsing aura emanating from the trees below. They appear to be calling out to you, almost, enticing you to visit the Forbidden Forest. Your phoenix companion swoops over you in a loop, their ruby and gold feathers glistening in the morning sun, and their huge elegant wings beating in a silent rhythm. Your best friend flies by your side, and together the three of you are the spirit of freedom. In the next moment, the phoenix dives down over the trees and flies low across the grass. You follow behind, almost touching the daisies with your fingertips. They guide you now to the left of the forest and over the enormous, glistening lake. The mighty talons of the phoenix trace the water, 
and you follow suit by dipping your hand into the cool, misty lake as you glide along its surface. Then you sit up straight on your broomstick and stretch your arms out wide, taking on the world in front of you. Your best friend joins in, and the two of you share an uncontrollable laughter, one that is brought on by an overwhelming joy. Suddenly, in the distance, and over to your right, you see the rest of your class gathering on the ground as the last few students lower themselves back down. And with that, the mighty phoenix banks to the right and lifts off the lake, guiding you back to your class. As you approach the group, the phoenix does one last loop around you, bidding you both a fond farewell before soaring up into the sky, disappearing above the clouds. As you gently bring your broomstick back down, you are met with cheers and applause from the students, and from Madame, who admits that in all her years of teaching, she has never seen a display quite like that, certainly not from a first-time flyer. And before you know it, Madame is closing off the lesson congratulating you all on a brilliant first day. You are advised to leave your broomsticks with her, and when you return to your bedroom tonight, they will be waiting for you. You place your broom down with the rest and give a heartfelt thank you to Madame. Then you join the gaggle of students now making their way back into the castle, ready for your second lesson of the day, Transfiguration. Pockets of conversation mingle through the group, and an excited buzz is in the air, with students laughing and talking together, predicting what might be in store in your next class. You shuffle along, talking happily with your best friend, both of you recounting every little detail of the unforgettable experience you have just shared. You will always remember your first flight on a broomstick. The group rounds a corner and comes to a stop, arriving at a crooked wooden door that is open just a crack, a golden light pulsing from within. In the next moment, the door creaks open by itself, inviting you inside. One by one, you filter through the door and enter a crooked room outlined with wooden bookshelves Two-person desks are spread evenly on the floor, and a blackboard stands at the very front. There are three huge windows running along the left wall, 
illuminating the room with a natural glow, where beads of gold dust dance in the sunlight. At the front of the classroom, sitting atop the teacher's table, is the grey and black cat that you remember from last night, guarding the great hall when you first entered the castle. It peers slowly around the students, watching very closely. Even though you've seen it once before, it is still magnificent to witness this cat leap forward and transform as quick as lightning into the now familiar deputy headmistress, who is also your professor. The same stern, cat-like eyes still pervade the room, but you can also sense a contained excitement within the headmistress. She might be just as eager as you to begin your training. You quietly take a seat with your best friend, second row back and perfectly in the middle. With all eyes on her, the professor starts by writing her name on the blackboard before outlining the lesson today. She will start by teaching you the very basics of transfiguration. You will then be able to practice a simple spell. And finally, she will show you the full potential of this magic at the end of the lesson. After a brief introduction, she calls out, Quills at the ready first, please. As the professor elaborates on the fundamental principles of transfiguration, the room begins to scribble away, taking notes. Transfiguration is the incredibly complex and difficult art of changing the appearance of an object or a person when more advanced. You could change something as simple as an ink pot into a mighty goblet, or in extreme cases, it has been known for powerful wizards to transfigure entire houses, aeroplanes, or small forests. This, however, takes years upon years of dedication it is incredibly difficult to master. This is because of the need for absolute accuracy with every spell to avoid problematic complications. Many years ago, she adds, it was used as a substitute to detention, acting as a deterrent to those students wishing to misbehave. However, you will be relieved to know that the school has since stopped this practice, as it was deemed immoral to transfigure naughty students into frogs for an hour. You share a cheeky look with your friend, imagining what they might look like as a little frog, before suppressing a quiet laugh. The professor reiterates to the class, just how difficult and potentially dangerous this subject can be when misused. With a raised eyebrow, she emphasizes that anybody caught messing around with spells will be out of her class before they can say transfiguration. Now, if that's all clear, one's at the ready, she calls out. You slowly take your wand from your pocket and twiddle it between your thumb and finger. In front of you now, the professor says, has appeared a crisp brown autumn leaf, fallen fresh this morning. Today you will be changing this leaf into a beautiful pink blossom. Observe. You gaze in wonder as the professor taps her wand against the leaf and speaks the words Verto 
floresco. The edges of the brown leaf begin to curl in on itself as it lifts up into the air. Then, in slow motion, the color fades from brown to a beautiful pastel pink, and the soft petals unfurl one by one revealing a perfect flower of blossom. With a subtle smile, she turns to the class and invites you all to give it a go. You hold your wand gently as the professor showed you and you speak the incantation Verto Floresco. You wait a moment, but nothing happens. Then you watch in amazement as your best friend taps their wand confidently, speaking the spell. Instantly, the leaf on their table transforms, spinning by itself from brown to pink and unfolding into a beautiful blossom. With a new determination, you repeat the spell. Verto Floresco, but still nothing happens. Verto Floresco, the leaf is not moving. Verto Floresco, and then the leaf begins to change. Oh, but instead of a pink blossom, it turns a bright orange, and blue dots appear across the fluorescent leaf. You look to your best friend in a slight panic, worried that you might never get it. Then the professor, who is pacing the aisle, overhears you and approaches with a soft smile and a new kindness in her eyes. Do not give up, she encourages with a hand on your shoulder. There isn't a great wizard alive who became that overnight. Failure needn't be as scary as it sounds. It can be a path to success, for without it we cannot hope to learn. She advises you to tighten your grip a little and to be patient with yourself. You have already proven yourself on a broomstick, she adds with a wink. Then, your best friend leans over, reminding you of what you told them during your flying lesson. They have seen all the brilliant things you have accomplished, not only today, but throughout your life. They know what you are capable of, and you are encouraged to think of yourself as they do, for that is your true value. The professor pats your back, telling you to give it another go. With a deep breath, you take a moment to allow any doubt or self-criticism to fall away now. You acknowledge how useless negativity is and that it only serves to hold us back. You allow a new positivity, self-belief and motivation to flow through you. And then, wand at the ready, you speak the incantation, Verto Floresco. Your wand pulses in your hand and a golden bead glows from the tip. The brown autumn leaf lifts into the air, and as it begins to twirl, you watch it transform into a rich pastel pink. One by one, the small pink petals unfold, until at last you are staring at a beautiful blossom flower that is radiating the faintest smell of a spring morning. 
you notice that you are smiling and the professor is beaming with pure pride, giving a little round of applause with her fingertips. Wonderfully done, she tells you, before striding back towards the front of the class. Your best friend puts their arm around you, giving you a proud smile and reminding you how grateful they are to have you with them through all of this. They are quite sure they never would have lifted their broomstick without your encouragement. You return the compliment and acknowledge that without a little help from your friend, you may have just given up on transfiguration before you even started. At the front of the room, the professor calls the attention of all students. Class is drawing to a close now, but before you go, she wants to show you the wonderful potential of this magic. And with that, she twirls her wand above her head and points it at the thick blackboard. Her forearm jerks and her wand emits a powerful blue light swirling around the blackboard. In the next moment, the blackboard begins to fold in on itself, disappearing into the floor. And then you watch, completely awestruck, as enormous tree roots sprout from the floor, and a thick trunk begins to spiral itself up toward the high ceiling. Then, in one magical movement, a vast collection of branches bloom from the top of the tree, and big, beautiful flowers blossom one by one in colours of blue, yellow, purple and white. These delicate flowers are backed by emerald green leaves that give off a pulsing light and an enchanting radiance. The entire class sits in silence, wide-eyed and utterly speechless. The professor reminds you all that no matter how dark things might get, you can always create something beautiful for yourself. Each and every one of you can achieve this level of magic, she adds, if you only keep inspired. And with a tired smile now, the professor dismisses your class. You take one last look at this magical tree, pulsing with a golden green glow. You are filled with inspiration, a drive to be the best version of you that you can possibly be, and you remind yourself to never give up despite the difficulties you may face, as these will only help you to grow. As you leave the classroom, side by side with your friend, you realize it is time to visit your gentle giant. 
ready for your next lesson, Care of Magical Creatures. With a renewed excitement, you wander through the castle halls and out of a large wooden door. You are met by the mid-afternoon sun beaming down on you. There is the sound of autumn birds chirping in the distance as they dart across the sky, and a gentle breeze drifts across your face. On the far side of the lake, near the entrance of the forbidden forest, is the giant's hut you can see your big friend shuffling nervously, preparing for his next class, and you ponder what magic might be in store for you now, under the guidance of your gentle giant. And then your thoughts suddenly turn to Daphne, the little house elf who helped you this morning. You cannot help but smile, thinking of your new friend, wondering how her day has been, and you hope to see her again soon. You arrive at a small clearing just outside the stone hut of the giant, where more and more students begin to gather with a quiet anticipation in the air. A huge black dog, a Great Dane, sleeps on the steps of the hut, his paw twitching as he dreams away his lazy afternoon. Just then, the giant calls for attention and gives you a quick smile before addressing the class instructing you all to follow his lead. He explains en route that for the first part of the lesson today, you will be taking care of a very special but currently endangered magical creature that lives on the borders of the forest. The giant reiterates the importance of not going into the forest itself. You will go in together soon, but not today. It's known as the Forbidden Forest for a reason, he adds. You arrive instead at a cluster of smaller trees on the very edge of the forest. Already you can feel a powerful radiance coming from the dark depths of the woodland. The forbidden forest is calling out to you. The giant snaps his fingers, bringing the focus back to him. Then he gently taps his knuckles against the little tree in front of you. In that moment, a collection of tiny eyes peep out from the nooks and crannies in the bark of the tree, gazing out with innocence and wonder. Then comes a flurry of furry feet carrying little round bodies across the tree trunk. These fluffy animals, no bigger than a strawberry, are pulsing in colours of yellow, green, purple or blue. You notice that their stomachs glow in a whirlpool of gold, giving off a soft, heavenly light. The reason for this, the giant explains, is a little known magical herb called Aurum folium, a plant that gives off a unique golden glow, and when ingested, provides these little animals with a warm golden light in the pit of their stomach that looks especially beautiful at night. The herb grows deep within the forest 
and is eaten by only one other animal, the firefly. These delightful furry creatures hop around in a sleepy daze, giving little yawns and almost tripping over themselves. The danger for these little creatures, the giant tells you, is that they're always in a state of being half asleep unaware of potential threat, and so they have been chased off by other animals and pushed to the very edge of the forest. They can only survive in the bark of enchanted trees, so now it's up to him and the rest of you to feed and care for them, so that they may continue to live and grow happily. He collects the fluffy animals now on his huge palm and forearm and tells you all to take one each, if you will. One of the little creatures, the smallest of the bunch, is gazing up at you with innocent eyes, begging you to pick them. You cannot resist their charm and you take them up in your hands already thinking of a name for your new friend. Their soft fur sends a beautiful tingle across your palms, and their glowing tummy seems to radiate a warmth now that passes through your entire body, and you are washed with a peaceful comfort. You share a smile with your best friend, who is chuckling away at their own fluffy animal that appears to be tickling their hands. In the next moment, the giant hands you a small vial of gold liquid, and the little ball of fluff in your hand seems to know exactly what this is. It begins to hop on both feet and brushes itself against your palm, eager for dinner. The giant tells you that this is the aurum folium leaf, ground into a fine gold dust and mixed with water so as to be easily digested by the animals. With your new furry friend in one hand and the golden vial in the other, You begin to feed them slow and steady as they take the vial in their mouth and gulp away in a sleepy bliss. You realize how wonderful it feels to give back and to take care of this tiny creature that truly needs your help. Despite our own difficulties, the giant says, There is a real purpose to be found in helping others, especially those less fortunate. You enjoy this precious moment and resolve to take this beautiful feeling with you wherever you go and to lead your life with love. As the tiny glowing ball of fluff in your hand gulps its last drop of elixir, they flop backwards, feet in the air, and begin to snore as quiet as a dormouse. The gentle giant watches on proudly, giving a low chuckle and congratulating each and every one of you for taking to this so well. He instructs you now, when you are ready, to place these animals back into their little homes in the tree. You take your new friend, now fast asleep, and give them one last stroke on the head. You lift them back up into the tree, putting them safely inside a deep cosy nook. You watch their tiny tummy lift and drop in total bliss as you leave them now to enjoy their rest. 
the giant tells you all that you can come back any time and visit these little creatures whenever you like. One last treat, he calls out, before you go. And with that, he gives a low whistle, aimed deep into the forest. And what you are about to experience will stay with you forever. Right before your eyes, galloping from the wood, appears a beautiful white unicorn, glistening with stardust in its mane. It gives off its own magical aura that illuminates the tree line. The entire group gasps, and you are utterly speechless. The unicorn stops next to the giant, fluttering its tail and bowing its head. There is something so wondrous about this creature. They hold a deep, powerful magic within them, and have been a guardian of this land for a thousand years. Your gentle giant introduces her as Olwyn, queen of all unicorns in the forest, and his very dear friend. And just then, this magical unicorn looks directly at you. Your stomach flutters with butterflies as Olwyn gently scrapes her hoof on the floor and bows her head to you. You return the bow, and the rest of your class takes a step back. Your best friend squeezes your arm, urging you to go forward. You take a slow step and hold your arm out in front of you. Keep your palm up, the giant whispers. Let her come to you. You stop and take a deep breath, trying to show Olwyn that you mean her no harm. And then, in a slow, shuffling step, this majestic unicorn edges closer and closer, until at last her soft head brushes against the palm of your hand and you gently stroke her head and scratch behind her ears. She moves her head over your shoulder and you embrace Olwyn now, holding her tight around her chest as she rests her head upon your back. You breathe as one with this magical unicorn, and already you can feel her powers of healing at work. You feel the warmth of her heart relaxing each and every muscle in your body now, filling you with hope, comfort, and a deep, deep love. Olwen will protect you now and guide your way. She will help you to heal and to let go of any burdens that weigh you down, allowing you to be free, confident, and most of all, happy. You feel completely safe, and you know that everything will be okay. In the next moment, the giant picks you up and places you gently on Olwyn's back as she flicks her head up in excitement. Now, 
the giant says with a smile, hold on tight. And with that, he gives Olwyn a gentle tap, and she begins to trot down towards the lake, carrying you effortlessly on her back as you gently hold around her chest. An unstoppable smile beaming on your face. Behind you, the gaggle of students fades out of sight, and you lean over to Olwyn and whisper a heartfelt thank you. You cannot believe that she picked you, but you are so glad that she did. It's as if you are gliding over a huge, soft cloud with the cool breeze tracing your skin and the beautiful Olwyn carrying you all the way around this enormous lake. You have never felt more free in your entire life. To your right, you see the majestic castle standing high and proud, backed by the late afternoon sun. In the next moment, your eyes widen with amazement as in front of you, out of thin air, appears the little house elf, Daphne. She sits atop Olwyn and turns her head to you, a huge smile on her face. Her big, round eyes gaze up at you in wonder as her ears flap gently with a steady gallop. Daphne tells you that every chance she had today, she has been checking in on you, watching from afar. She admits to hiding at the back of your class during transfiguration, and watching from the bushes as you flew your first broomstick. And after witnessing your beautiful connection with Olwyn, she couldn't resist surprising you. Daphne goes on to tell you just how proud she is of all that you have achieved today. She has seen just how resilient you can be, how kind, passionate and motivated you are, and how excited she is for your future. Then her voice softens, and she reminds you that she will always be there for you whenever you need her, and that she is so lucky to call you her friend. Your arms wrap around her tummy as you ride, and you whisper to her that you couldn't wish for a better guardian, and that you are so grateful to have met her. Daphne responds by squeezing your arm tight, and you feel one or two teardrops fall on your hand. Together you gallop around the glistening lake and share an infectious laughter as you enjoy each other's wonderful company and celebrate the beautiful Olwyn, who is taking you for the ride of your life. You enjoy this moment of pure bliss and remind yourself how grateful you are for all those who are special to you. As you round the end of the lake, Bathing in the low sun, Olwyn steers to your right, 
and heads back towards the giant's hut. Before you arrive, Daphne politely invites you to meet her by the lake after class for a sunset picnic. And be sure to bring your friend, she adds. You accept without hesitation, and with a click of her fingers, she disappears once again into thin air. As Olwyn brings herself to a slow canter and enters the clearing, you are met with a collection of beaming smiles. Your gentle giant lifts you off the unicorn and announces that class is dismissed. As the students drift off back to the castle, you turn and give Olwyn one final stroke, whispering to her that you hope to meet again soon. She ruffles her head on your arm before galloping off back into the forbidden forest. Just then, your best friend races up to you, giving you a warm hug, telling you how incredible that was to witness. You squeeze them tight and tell them of Daphne's invitation. Your friend gives a wide smile, excited to finally meet the lovely little elf. The gentle giant clears his throat, and as you turn to look at him, he holds out his huge arms with a proud, mischievous smile. As he pulls you in to a warm embrace, he tells you that Olwyn has never taken to a student before, and that letting you ride her was actually a bit of a spontaneous decision. You thank him with all your heart for the most magical memory that you will never forget. You invite the giant to join you for your evening picnic, and with a sheepish smile, surprised to have been asked, he gladly accepts, and the three of you wander off down towards the lake that is now pulsing with a golden shimmer, backed by the majestic castle. Classes, for the most part, are done for the day, and in the distance, many students disappear inside, ready for another magical feast. Only this time, you won't be joining, as you have something even more special planned. As you draw nearer to the lake, you see the faint silhouette of the tiny elf, Daphne, who is now carrying a huge wicker basket, holding it with both hands, struggling under the weight. Your gentle giant approaches the little elf and with his first finger lifts the basket from her arms and begins to prepare your picnic. He waves a red and white blanket onto the floor and unpacks the basket bit by bit. He greets Daphne as an old friend and she gives a happy chuckle, telling you they have been companions for many years now. In the next moment, you reveal your best friend and introduce them to this little elf. Your friend crouches on one knee and holds out a hand, but Daphne skips the handshake and dives straight in for a huge hug, exclaiming that anyone who is a friend of yours is a friend of Daphne's. The little elf has prepared a mini buffet for you, and as the giant unpacks the endless basket of food, 
you are met with the smell of hot pastry and freshly baked goods, coupled with sandwiches, fresh fruit, and of course, pudding, with ice-cold drinks to wash it all down. Your lovely group gets comfortable on the big red blanket, enjoying the sudden peace that surrounds you, and the gentle lapping of the lake as you bask in the setting sun, glowing in a golden red. You pick and choose little bits of the buffet, and once your plate is full, you begin to enjoy each delicacy prepared by Daphne, and you thank her for this wonderful feast. As you eat, you suddenly get the urge to cool off a little. You remove your shoes and your socks and dip your tired feet into the cool waters of the lake. All of your friends follow suit and you sit in a line on the bank of the water. Instantly, you feel a beautiful, cool sensation swirling around your toes and up into your ankles. This refreshing feeling trickles up into your legs and begins to cool down your entire body, allowing you to breathe slow and deep, entering a state of pure relaxation. This delicious feast, coupled with the soft heat of the setting sun and the cool waters of the lake, is a perfect combination, finished off by the wonderful company around you, as you all sit in a peaceful silence now, the kind only possible between true friends. The golden red sun is halfway behind the tree line now, and a crimson glow ripples across the lake, creating specks of stardust that flicker on the water. You remember how only yesterday you journeyed across the other side of this lake, approaching the mighty castle underneath a blanket of starlight. You realize how far you have already come since then, and your thoughts turn now to the wonderful day that you have had. You quietly reflect on everything you have been through, thinking of the valuable lessons you have learned, not only for magic, but for life itself. Flying has taught you the value of courage and confidence. It has encouraged you to believe in yourself without hesitation. It has opened your eyes to the wonderful experience of flight and exposed the beauty of magic that surrounds you every day. You reminisce on your adventure with your phoenix guardian, a wonderful new companion, who is now, no doubt, perched on the shoulder of the kind old headmaster, enjoying a magical feast. Transfiguration posed many challenges, but through all this you persevered and triumphed. You vow to yourself to not be afraid of making mistakes, to be more patient with yourself, and to embrace the unexpected as part of this wonderful journey. And, so long as we never give up and listen to our hearts, there will always be doors open to us. 
care of magical creatures has given you a chance to reconnect with the beauty and wonder of nature. You were able to give back and to care for a creature that needed your help. You realize that it is a different type of magic to help those in need. And through this lesson, you intend to do that much more. You were also able to meet one of the most beautiful animals you have ever seen, the wonderful unicorn, Olwyn, another guardian of this enchanted world, and another guardian of you. You take a moment to look at your friends enjoying the sunset, and you feel a deep gratitude for each and every one of them. Your best friend gives you a smile, telling you that there is nobody else they would rather share this moment with. Daphne holds your hand now, whispering in your ear that no matter what, she will always be there for you cheering you on, and there to lend a helping hand if ever you should need it. The gentle giant gives you a mischievous smile, letting you know that you are welcome at his hut any time, and he will make you one of his famous stews. Not quite as good as little Daphne's cooking, he adds, but not too shabby if he does say so himself. And finally, ever present in your thoughts, is the black and white sleepy cat, without whom you may never have found the magical alley in the first place, and who was there to see you off on your adventure. You tell the giant that you wish that naughty cat was here now, and he gives a nod, agreeing with you. Then he suggests that maybe one day soon you can go back to the alley together and visit your wonderful friend. You would like that very much, you tell him, very much indeed. And just then, in a crimson flash, the last light of the setting sun disappears beyond the horizon, and the first of the silver stars begin to pepper the rich purple and blue sky. Your best friend quickly reminds you that it is time for your final lesson of the day. Despite feeling completely relaxed, and very sleepy already, you cannot deny the lingering excitement still running through you as you anticipate the magic of astronomy. As the little elf casts a spell to dry off your feet and packs away the picnic basket, your gentle giant stands himself up and bids you all a warm good night. He will see you again very soon, he adds, and he strides away back to his warm and cosy hut, ready to turn in for the night. Daphne suddenly asks if she can show you something that she has never shown anyone. As you shuffle on your shoes, you tell her that her secret is safe with you. And then she takes your hand and tells you to trust her. In the next moment, you feel yourself lift ever so slightly above the ground. Daphne begins to climb her feet as if walking up an invisible staircase, and you float up alongside her, 
higher and higher above the castle grounds. You are becoming completely weightless and free. It's as if you are inside an enchanted bubble, drifting up into the sky, approaching the highest peak of the castle, the Astronomy Tower. There is a special kind of magic at work here, a magic that only these wonderful elves possess. It is a privilege to witness. The view over the twilight castle and the lake reflecting the light of the moon is truly magical. As you float up further into the night, you approach the walled parapet of the astronomy tower. You drift over the wall and land perfectly on your feet. You thank Daphne for all of her help and she gives you both a tight hug at the knees before whispering that she will be back after your lesson and disappearing once again out of sight. Her favorite trick you think to yourself with a smile. For a brief moment, you are the only two people on the tower. But suddenly, the door swings open, and out comes a tall, dark and slender witch with eagle eyes of brown and braided hair in a soft bun. She glides over the floor and has an unrivaled elegance. Her sapphire robe drapes over her wrists and sweeps across the concrete effortlessly. Behind the professor comes the rest of your class, wide-eyed and eager to begin. Took a shortcut, did we? The professor asks with a knowing smile. With a shuffle of her cloak, a wand appears from her sleeve and she casts a swirling spell on the tower. In the next moment, a collection of blankets and pillows are spread out evenly on the stone floor, and a blue shimmer covers the night sky. Tonight, she says, will be a nice introduction to the vast subject of astronomy. You are encouraged to find a blanket and lie back, allowing your eyes to adjust. As you find a blanket next to your best friend, the professor explains that tonight you will gaze at the constellations and see where they take you as they guide you on your own unique journey. This is about becoming one with the stars, she says, so that we may study them with a deeper understanding in the weeks to come. Then, almost in an instant, the night sky opens up, revealing itself in all of its wonder and intricate detail. Shooting stars are passing through the blue and silver glitter. Some are brief, but others follow the full curvature of the Earth, passing over this protective sphere at a smooth, steady pace, illuminating a pathway in the sky. Allow your body and your mind to soften, the professor repeats, and for your imagination to come alive.
Then you watch in amazement as four constellations begin to reveal themselves, pulsing in colors of red, green, yellow, and blue, backed by the infinite black beyond. The first constellation to come into focus is a red lion peppered with golden starlight. Then appears a blue and bronze eagle soaring high above the lion. To the left emerges a green serpent shape encased in a silver stardust. And finally you see a beautiful yellow badger, peppered with black and white. These are the constellations of the four wizarding houses that govern the school. They were made using powerful magic, where the four founders combined their talents to leave a permanent reminder for generations to come. You can almost see where the spell hit the sky all those years ago and branched out to create these four huge crests now pulsing bright above you. And now, the professor adds, it is time for you to go on your own unique journey through the stars. Allow them to take you wherever they want to, and trust in this enchanted universe. Then, as if in your own private theatre of starlight, the colourful constellations begin to fade and a very personal display begins just for you. Through the crystal zigzags and the looping patterns of the silver stars, you begin to follow your own life's journey in a vast web across the sky. As the patterns become more rich and embedded, there are snapshot images and pictures in the stars, showing your deep history as you relive all the wonderful memories in your life. Everything that has happened has brought you here and has shaped the kind, generous and brilliant person that you are today. Many of the silver lines cross over each other, symbolizing a new friendship or a special bond, and where the lines meet you see flashes of those that are most dear to you, smiling down at you from the enchanted twilight sky. No matter where life takes you, all of these people will be watching over you, and all of your happiest memories will stay with you forever. Then, you suddenly see all of your hopes and dreams spread out in front of you, and you feel grateful for all the wonderful opportunities that still lie ahead of you.
you know it is never too late, and you feel a powerful resolution to make the most of everything that life has to offer, and to go forward with an open heart, full of love, and guided by the desire to simply be good. You feel so thankful for all the beautiful things that you do have, and for all the people that you have been so lucky to meet and to share life with. This enormous collection of beautiful memories, important people and inspiration surrounds you now in a protective twilight dome of shimmering blue. You realize that there is no time for worry or negativity in your life. There is no utility or comfort to be found in this. And as you take in this unforgettable display you allow all the colours of the night to swirl around you and cleanse your mind of any remaining thoughts. This angelic starlight will heal your heart, rejuvenate your body and clear your mind, allowing you to let go of all those things that no longer serve you, and to go forward now with positivity and hope. These wonderful feelings wash over you as you give yourself over completely to the beautiful night sky. As this starlight display comes to an end, you are left with the soft glitter of the night, guarded by the pearl moon that beams down in a spotlight, perfectly covering the tower. As your sleepy eyes look around, you realize that your lesson has finished. Only you and your best friend remain, and the professor watching over you with care. As you come back into a lucid state, the professor whispers that you have a visitor, and she bids you a wonderful good night before sweeping through the door and out of sight. And then you hear the soothing voice of Daphne asking you to be still now and trust her once again. In the next moment, Daphne clicks her fingers and you feel yourself floating as if being carried on a soft, comfortable bed. The little elf guides you now down the long spiral steps of the tower keeping you perfectly afloat and relaxed. Daphne explains that a powerful elven enchantment lies upon you, and for the time being you are invisible, as if under a magical cloak. This way she can sneak you back into your room without any distraction and let you drift off in peace. 
as you float through a stone archway, you are greeted by the sound of a low, crackling fire, a familiar ticking clock, and the scribbling of students finishing assignments for the morning. Daphne gently guides you through the muffled hubbub of the common room as you float effortlessly on your back. You cannot help but smile ear to ear as this wonderful magic unfolds. You slowly drift over to the next corridor and she guides you down towards your bedroom at last. Before you know it, you are being gently lowered onto your bed. Outside the window, you can hear the soothing sound of falling rain that has bubbled up from the clouds all of a sudden. Daphne places a warm hand on your forehead and murmurs a low spell. This will allow you to completely let go and enter a deep sleep, dreaming of the most beautiful things. In that moment, you feel yourself sink deeper and deeper into the mattress as you become heavier and heavier. A beautiful vibration begins to ripple through your body. You feel your forehead letting go of all tension as each muscle relaxes now. Your brow becomes soft and free. Your cheeks let go and your lips soften. Your jaw relaxes and the muscles in your face become warm and soft. You feel your shoulders and your neck releasing all tension as each muscle relaxes completely like a soft butter melting. This wonderful sensation runs down your arms, relaxing your upper arm, releasing your elbows, softening your forearms and allowing your hands to be heavy. This new warmth trickles up and down your back, softening your spine, and all the muscles in your back are letting go now. Your buttocks muscles become heavy and free from all tension. The muscles in your thighs are warm and soft. Your knees are loose and the tension in your calves is melting away. The tops of your feet tingle with delight. The soles of your feet and your toes become soft now and filled with warmth. You lie here now in a state of total tranquility, blanketed with peace. Daphne bids you a gentle good night, reassuring you that she is not far away. 
you are filled with a deep relaxation. The gentle sound of the rain only adds to your comfort. And now, with nothing left to think at all, you allow yourself to completely let go and give yourself over to the wonderful night as you dream of beautiful things. <laughs>